Is it possible that animals have what we would call language? Well, they have, so I'm call it sensory-based thinking. When I do my animal behavior talks, I go, well, they think in pictures. Like, I have this picture of this horse that's scared to death of black cowboy hats. He was abused by somebody wearing a black cowboy hat. Now, if you wear a white cowboy hat, he's just fine. Huh. You can wear a ball cap, he's fine. But if you get a big, fat, black purse that's sort of the same size, that might be a problem. Huh. You see, it's a visual picture. Uh, animals recognize the voices of the good and the bad people. There was an elephant that was afraid of uh, diesel-powered equipment, but he was fine with gasoline-powered huh. equipment. And there's a lot of complicated stuff with the tone of voice in animals, hmm. uh, you know, for, for conveying a different emotion. But it's a sensory-based world. It's also a world of detail. And when I did my first work with livestock, I got down in the chutes to see what they were seeing. You know, everybody's like forcing the cattle through all these chutes. And I noticed, well, this animal would balk at a shadow. Or you'll see this glass has got reflections, you know, a reflection on a wet floor. Mm. The steer would stop and put his head down. And other people weren't noticing this visual detail that the steer was noticing. Because I've found in my work with the slaughter plants, if you get rid of uh, the reflections and the chain hanging down and the coat on the fence, then they walk right up the chute because that's really what they're afraid of. They don't know what slaughtering is. It's, 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 vi it's a world of visual detail. I tell my students, you want to understand your dog, you need to get away from language. What are its ears doing? What is it looking at? What's the tail position? And then, of course, different animals have instinctual um, behaviors. So different primates hug each other yeah, and they lovey-dovey. Yeah. But <laughs> dogs, if I put my hand up over the back of the dog like that, that's a dominance thing in dogs. Go look at all the pictures and oh. greeting cards of kids hugging doggy around the shoulders. He's tolerating it, <laughs> but he doesn't have that <laughs> mouth open in a nice, relaxed, um, open mouth. He's got to kind of, <laughs> you know, tight shut like that. Because there's a little clash here between the hardwired primate lovey-dovey and um, yes, it's yes. wired to a different circuit in the dog. But it's, it, you know, uh, I don't really, I'm kind of outclassed here on getting discussion as to what language is. But it's all sensory based. Yes, yeah. And there's certain kinds of very abstract Pros that I just get all kinds of inappropriate associations and it doesn't really mean much to me. Mm -hmm. Paul, I wanted well, to ask you about the Watson thing. Were you, yeah, what did you me, take away from well, that? Let, let me, well, first I want to thank Temple because I, would, I have a greyhound, Tessie, and I'll always <laughs> hug her around the neck. And she always kind of gives me that look. <laughs> hug, her, hug, her yeah. little, hug her a little yeah, further I'll, back. I'll, I'll do that. And if you hug so, her a little further back, she'll be fine. And the other thing is don't pat your dog like this. That's it. Stroke it. Really? Make it feel like the mother's tongue. We, Don't do this to the dog. We yeah. have to talk because I'm doing everything okay. wrong with right. my dog. <laughs> <laughs> but, but anyway, we'll, we'll talk. This okay. is very valuable to me. <laughs>